Imagine being able to solve real life problem that a number of people face with just a program you built using your own brain and skills. Every project will bring to you a new set of challenges that will motivate you to explore new tools and techniques to tackle and that is how we will make project to show in our CV. So hey everyone, welcome back to the Coding Ninjas YouTube channel. This is Ashu and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the confusion that we all have in our minds that is how to manage DSA and development all together. So if you are an engineering student, you must be told that data structures are very much important. They actually are, but we also need to focus on development part too, because that will what make our portfolio and that is how we will make project to show in our CV. So how do we learn data structure and development together? Or well, the better question here will be that, do we even need to learn them both together? So I assure you by the end of this video, you will be able to make a clear plan for how you need to go about it. So keep watching this video and if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Also subscribe to the Coding Ninja for more such amazing videos. So in this video, I will discuss several points that we need to keep in our mind while going for DSA or development. So the very first point that comes to my mind is that what to learn first. I'm assuming that you haven't started with any of them, not DSA, not development part. So what to learn first? Do we have to learn DSA first or we have to learn development part first or we can start both together. So if you haven't started with any of them, do not commit a mistake by starting them together because that will kill your time and you won't be able to learn even one properly. If we start both together, we will be constantly in stress from both the sides because both are tricky and both require practice. So doing them together is just difficult and won't give the right results. So you have to start with DSA and just learn the DSA first. Learn the concept of DSA and practice good amount of questions based on DSA. And once you are confident in DSA, then it's the time to move towards the development. But that doesn't mean you will leave DSA, keep solving questions based on DSA consistently and side by side start with development part. One thing here that I would like you guys to note that have clarity on what you are going to learn in the development. Make sure you learn one at a time, either web development or app development or you can make projects on machine learning. But choose one at a time and start learning that along with the DSA. Make a firm decision that yes, DSA is must and with that, make sure you are choosing only one domain of development, either web development or app development or you are making projects on machine learning, but make sure you are picking up one at a time. Now, you have already done DSA. You know the concept of DSA. You have practiced good amount of question on based on DSA. Now you have to solve moderate to hard level question based on DSA. For that, select one platform. It can be any platform, whether you are participating in the contest on Code Chef, Code Forces, or you are practicing the interview questions on Code Studio. There are a lot of problems to practice that too in structured way. So that will save your time and just keep solving two, three problems daily on that platform and side by side do development. So here I would like to tell you about Coding Ninja's Code Studio platform. For those of you who want to code, do visit Code Studio by Coding Ninjas. It is a free platform which provides free online code editor and compiler in Python, Java, C++. Code Studio is the best platform to prepare for coding interviews and you can find top interview questions, their solution, guided path to learn various topics in DSA. Coming to the second point, that is clarity on the end goal. Like if you are learning something, you should know that why are you learning that? What is the purpose behind that? And what we have to achieve after learning this? So if you are learning DSA, you are doing DSA, you should know that yes, I am doing this to enhance my problem solving skills. Also, DSA is something which is asked in almost every companies nowadays. So the end goal is to polish our problem solving skills by solving more and more problems. And in case of development, end goal can be very person to person. Some would want to learn and make one to projects just for the resume and just to implement the things they have learned and some really want to make contribution to the open source. So like main point is that you should know 
what you are learning and for what you are learning coming to the third point that is time management it is very much important like how you will be spending your time on both the things like dsa and development so here are also multiple ways like you can do dsa twice a week and rest of the day development or you can do both every day like suppose you feel more fresh in the morning so you can solve dsa problem in the morning and after getting free from your college then you can do development in the evening or before sleeping in the night or vice versa you can do development part in the morning and uh, dsa part in the evening so there can be multiple ways for managing the time for spending the time on both the things dsa as well as development so choose the one which works for you which suits you which is productive for you so time management is very much important now coming to the fourth point in the fourth point i wanted to discuss two question that why should you consider going into software development and why do we need to learn data structures and algorithm any amount of emphasis that data structures and algorithm are the foundation of your software development career is just not enough we should know that how programming is not about figuring out a solution to a given problem but is about figuring out the most optimal solution to it and for that a fluency in the dsa is what you need i would like to explain exactly how data structures and algorithm are applied in real life with an example if you have ever ordered food online using the mobile application of various food ordering app the app select one employee who is allocated to your order and the process that seems so simple from the outside actually uses a lot of mathematical techniques which are essentially built on the foundation of data structures and algorithm so if you try making a basic food ordering app you will require three kind of data structures you can use linked list to store the item in the menu stack to store the item that user order and queues to store the order from the various user the more interesting part is understanding how these data structures will implement the operation we need to do and why we use these this question you will be able to answer yourself once you believe in the subject and if you talk about another application of data structures that can be seen in web scraping it is a technique used to extract data from the website which means scraping it from html files html itself is a binary tree so in order to perform web scraping successfully one must have knowledge about the binary trees which which are type of data structures so one thing is clear that we must learn dsa before we go to development because only if we know there exists an algorithm that will make our code better will be able to use it coming to the next question but before that let me tell you about coding ninjas dsa course guys do remember to check out data structures and algorithm course by coding ninjas after this course you will be better prepared to crack data structures and algorithm interviews all the courses come with a great doubt support through teaching assistant who will give you individual attention and also with the deadline based learning you will stay motivated to learn and excel so coming to the another question that is why should you consider going into the software development so to answer this question i will be mentioning some points so the number one point will be that problem solving skills imagine being able to solve real life problem that a number of people face with just a program you built using your own brain and skills so not just this but there are a number of routine tasks that you need to do every day that can be easily done by a computer to give you more accurate result and obviously save your time once you dive into the field of software development you would be able to look at a problem from a different perspective and also be able to build solution for them second point that is new learning opportunities you will get new learning opportunities every, every day during your journey of software development you will be working on all kind of projects large small complex simple but every project will be new to you every project will bring to you a new set of challenges that will motivate you to explore new tools and techniques to tackle so you never stop growing moreover you will be working in a team coming to the third point that is creative side yes there is also a creative side of software development that who says software development is all about writing random code a painter looks at something perceive it in his own way and then find out the best way to put it on canvas in the similar way a programmer comes across a problem perceive it break it down in the smaller problems and then find out the best way to solve it a programmer must be creative with his code because the goal is not to find a solution but to find the optimal solution 
Fourth point is career opportunities. In today's world, any kind of advancement is not possible without technology. Any kind of solution is not possible to be reached without the uses of technology. Growth of any firm is not possible without technology too. So we have talked about problem solving skill, new learning opportunities, creative side and career opportunity. So guys, this was it in this video. I hope after watching this video, you must have get clarity on how to manage DSA and development all together. And if you like this video, please like, comment and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to the Coding Ninjas for more such amazing content. Hit the like button and thank you very much for watching this video.